So there are three main types of cameras that you can use for stop motion, but which one is the best? Well today we'll be covering those three cameras and the strengths and weaknesses of each. Hey guys, welcome back to Learning Curve Tech, where I learn tech with you, and on this channel I make stop motion tutorials for beginners on a budget as well as tutorials for more advanced animators. So if you are looking for those kinds of videos, you can subscribe and hit the bell down below so you don't miss out on any further videos. So there are three main types of cameras for stop motion, webcams, smartphones, and DSLRs. So starting off with the webcam, the webcam has the strength of being small and lightweight as well as relatively cheap compared to other camera options and it also has a fairly close focusing distance which is important if you want to get really close up shots however webcams don't have as good quality as smartphones or dslrs and they sometimes don't even have manual focus which is really important if you want to get the best stop motion possible. They also only have one lens usually, and they don't have any optical zoom. So if you want to zoom at all, the quality is going to be diminished. So overall, a webcam is great for anybody beginning who doesn't have a smartphone, but also doesn't want to spend so much money on a DSLR because maybe they're just starting out and they're just practicing and they want to see if they actually like stop motion before they go ahead and buy a really expensive camera or a really expensive smartphone. So the second type of camera you could use is a smartphone. So smartphones have the strengths of being an all-in-one package and what I mean by this is you have your camera built in with your stop motion app and your editing app. So you can really do all you need to make great stop motions on a smartphone. Smartphones are also really easy to use when it comes to stop motion. They do have better quality than webcams and they do have more manual controls, but definitely not as much as DSLRs. Smartphones are also compatible with a wide variety of stop motion apps. This means that you can pick whatever app is your favorite and it will probably work on your smartphone. Now, if you want some recommendations for stop motion apps for smartphones, check out the video above. However, smartphones are very hard to keep steady unless you have a tripod adapter. They also usually don't have optical zoom, and a lot of nicer smartphones with nicer cameras are very expensive. So before we move on, what camera do you use? And what type of camera do you think is the best? Let me know in the comments below. So the third type of camera we are talking about today is DSLRs or mirrorless cameras. I say this because DSLRs are more widely known than mirrorless, but mirrorless cameras also work really well with stop motion. And DSLRs and mirrorless cameras are pretty much on the same level of quality, except for a few differences. So the strengths of DSLRs is that they have excellent quality, professional capabilities, interchangeable lenses, and lots of manual controls. This is really important if you want to get the best stop motion possible. DSLRs also have optical zoom and manual focus, unlike smartphones and webcams. However, DSLRs are expensive and they are also very large and heavy. And unfortunately, not as many programs are built for DSLRs. But overall, DSLRs are very good options for anyone who is looking to really get the best stop motion quality possible. You really can't do what you can do with a DSLR with a webcam or a smartphone. Now next week, I'll be going over the best DSLR and mirrorless cameras for stop motion. So if you don't wanna miss out on that, you can subscribe by hitting the logo. If you wanna take your stop motion skills to the next level, check out one of these tutorials on the screen. That's all for now guys, and I'll see you next time on Learning Curve Tech.